Oh, hope you're doing well. Well, my hat's off to one person out there that guessed when I said that I was going to give a hint that this had to, uh, to do with a little bit of black powder. Okay. I would have to look it back up. I'm sorry. But somebody guessed a miniature cannon. Well, kind of close. As you can tell from the thumbnail, it's not a miniature cannon. But it was a good guess. So we'll be getting into that coming right up. Alright, well, this is what it's all about. The Traditions Vest Pocket Derringer. I've been wanting one of these for so long. And, uh, give you a little information about this. Okay. This is the Traditions Vest Pocket Derringer. Comes in .31 caliber. Ignition type is a percussion cap. The barrel is a brass rounded barrel of uh, two and a quarter inches. The overall length is four and three quarter inches. Um, and the weight is three quarters of a pound. Now this is a smooth bore uh, pistol. So you're not gonna get real good accuracy for very far. Now, I got a little pencil that I put some marks on right here, if you can see those. One is if it's loaded and one if it's empty. So, it goes down to the top one so we know that that is empty. This is an empty gun. Now don't let anybody tell you that this little rod down here is supposed to be a ramrod. Because it, 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 it won't work for a ramrod. Okay? It goes all the way inside and there's no way to get to do anything with it so it's a piece of decoration I will be taking and getting for anybody else that has one of these something you might think about doing uh, is I'm gonna get a wooden dowel and then I just like a little wooden ball or something that's like most starters and put it on the wooden dowel so I can have something to put it in there. Uh, we'll take this out in a little bit and shoot it. Um, what these were real famous for was uh, gamblers and high society people putting their vest pockets. Uh, gamblers, uh, women of the night, put it in their garter belt. Uh, more affluence, but yeah, that word women might carry something like that inside their uh, muff but uh, I just think it's so cool it's uh, all brass with uh, simulated ivory handle the way this works is you half cock make sure there's no percussion cap in there put your powder in and the amount of powder I'm using in this is right around six, right around six grams or grains, and that's what it looks like. And that's what I shoot in my 45. I don't know. If, let me get up and get, get you a close look. Uh, there we go. You can see the this one here is for the uh, Derringer, and this is what I shoot in the 45. So you, it uses very little powder. So it's a fun gun to shoot. Uh, not just because it's fun, but it's very inexpensive. The difference in size and ball makes them cheaper. Of course, if you make your own, they're really super cheap. And then, of course, our homemade percussion caps, which we're going to take these out and we're going to shoot in this in just a little bit. Um, I'm not sure what else to say about it. It's just neat. Oh, it does have a bead front sight. And when you cock the hammer down, if you look down the blade of the hammer, let's see. I don't know if you can get, let's see, where is that at? Right there, look down the blade of the hammer across the bead. There you go. <laughs> um, 
Now, in loading this, I have to actually take this and take my little hammer and really beat it. Because the balls I'm using are a 315, which is just a little too big. I do have some 31, or anyway, the ones I got coming are just three point. Oh, so they should fit in this a lot better. Um, no need to use any wads. In fact, they tell you not to uh, wads or anything in this. And then cleaning it's just like cleaning any other black powder pistol. Uh, I've, I haven't disassembled it all the way, but I have taken the barrel off to clean it. So, anyway, let's get outside, fire this off a couple times, and we'll see you outside. All right, well, we're outside here. <laughs> the cows are hungry, I think. Anyway, let's go ahead and load this up. Let's put this in half cock. Make sure it's free. Now, um, these little things that I use for my powder and stuff, I think they're called specimen, specimen vials. I'm not sure. Anyway, I bought them on, uh, Amazon so if you're curious you could look them up there and they're really cheap you get a hundred of them in a bag anyway we're gonna go ahead and put that powder down in there now you're gonna see how hard it is to get these balls in but when I get those new ones uh, it should be a lot easier and if the wind noise is bad I will uh, mess with the uh, audio in post so you don't have to listen to so much wind noise but it might sound make me sound a little different anyway put the ball on there and then what I do is I take my little hammer here do not do this with a metal hammer please push that down in there now here's the hard part try to get that pencil to stay on there while you pound the ball down there it goes Okay, remember I showed you those pencil marks? There's the first and second pencil marks on there. That first one's all the way down. That means the ball's completely seated. You wanna make sure you have no air in your chambers on black powder, because you put get air in, in there and it turns it into an explosive, okay? Um, I'll try to find this one picture on the internet and I'll post it. Post it right down here, if I can find it. Okay, and then we're going to be using the homemade percussion caps. These ones are made with uh, two cap gun caps. Some of them have three, because I have a bunch of those little dot ones left over. So I'm not sure exactly which one this is, but it's one of the homemade ones here. And get that on there straight. And then very carefully, what I do is, after I put the cap on, is just take this pencil and kind of make sure it's on there nice and snug. Okay, now let's see how this does. Shot went off, percussion cap worked. Oh, and I didn't bring my pocket knife out. These caps, after you fire them, are a little stubborn coming back off of this pistol. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and load that up again. This is such a fun little thing to shoot. And like I said, so cheap it uses, uh, they, they say, use between five and ten grain this is right around six seven gr I don't have a pistol measurer so I just have to use my other one I got which isn't good for measuring small quantities okay and the big tubes of this let me see I got one two three four five you can fit six balls in one of these little this is a little bit bigger this is a uh, five cc and I think that's what it is. Our five milliliters. 
And this one is... I think two milliliter, the one I used for the powder. So. And I got some uh, videos coming up. Uh, I want to say thank you to one of my subscribers. Uh, Help me pick up a couple of things. One's going to be for a demo another demonstration on making homemade percussion caps. But then I got picked up something for the homestead here that I'll be demonstrating because I have a problem with a certain giant rodent and. Uh, Robert was able to help me get that device so I could show. Boy, let me try not talking while I'm doing this. Hold on. <laughs> like I said, I can't wait to get those little bit smaller balls. There it goes. Oop. Helps if I hit it. Um. I can't wait till those smaller balls come in. We'll show you those when they come in and see if they're that much easier to, to put on here and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, Robert was able to help me pick up something that uh, I've been wanting to get because I have a problem with a certain rodent. I won't tell you the bandito's name, but been doing some actual damage not just to the property but to the house so okay there we go so we got that coming up then I wanted to do some more experimenting uh, he also uh, with the funds that he donated uh, allowed me to pick up some strike anywhere matches that I know that sounds small but I've seen where people make percussion caps out of uh, strike anywhere matches so I wanted to try that and also uh, making uh, percussion caps using the striker of the match and uh, the match heads. So we'll see how that all goes in the near future. Hold on, we got a car coming. Anyway, so we're gonna be experimenting with the uh, strike anywhere matches and the match heads with the uh, scrapings from the striker. And then someone else mentioned something and I'm gonna give it a try, but I don't know how it's gonna work out. Uh, they suggested taking a needle on the uh, cap gun caps and piercing a hole through it. Who knows? It might just help. Anyway, this is the second load. Let's see how this goes. So you can see the caps from the cap guns work just fine. Um, somebody else asked can you do this for primers? And I have seen where some people on the internet have done that. Um, so I would say yes, but experiment around with it and see what you come up with. You know, try it with one or two caps in there. And uh, Well, I'm just gonna take that off when we get back inside. Um, I like this. Uh, you carry it in your pocket and a few people have asked why I like black powder well it's just fun I mean it, it's historical and the things I've learned since I got into doing black powder um, as far as the, rev the revolution of how firearms in the US have you know progressed through the years from the you know the flintlock musket smooth bores to the rifles flintlocks and then percussion caps it's just all interesting anyway we'll catch you back inside well I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this with me and uh, it's a fun little fun little gun hard to come by well all black powder is right now believe it or not so if you if you've been thinking about getting it, once you find a place that has it in stock, you better order it. 
because when this went in stock I ordered it two days later they were out of stock again I don't know how many they got in but that's how quick they went out so uh, just like everything else uh, the percussion caps that's why we're getting into doing the homemade percussion caps and by the way I get I'm getting ready to do another video on this a little modification I did that makes the caps turn out a little bit better <clears throat> Anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I plan on doing more videos about this in the future, or with this, I should say. I want to do one. I can't print up any targets right now. My printer's out of ink, so uh, we'll either buy some targets or print some up when we get some more ink in. And uh, we'll uh, see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this. Well, I'm going to put that picture down here again because I can't emphasize this enough. Never use smokeless powder in your black powder revolvers or pistols. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I'll put a couple of pictures up over here I think you might like. Please, if you haven't done so yet, go down, hit that subscribe button. When you do that, hit that little bell icon. That way you'll be notified next time we upload a video. And we will... Uh, be getting into a item that Robert was able to help us get. Let me see something here. Oh. Oh. Yeah, it'll be our next video coming up. So. Stay tuned for that. Thank you again, Robert. I don't want to use your last name because I didn't ask for permission and you know I I don't want to violate anybody's privacy. So anyway, uh, the picture down here with the uh, quarter and the two balls, you can see the 44, that's a 454 round ball, and then the uh, 31 point or uh, 315 uh, round ball. And like I said, next time we shoot this, hopefully I'll have the uh, 310 balls in and won't be quite so hard to load and we'll shoot it a few more times and add some targets so anyway click on one of these videos over here one up here I, I think you might like one down here is one that YouTube might yeah tongue tied anyway YouTube picked this one I picked this one and you can always click my smiley face to subscribe till next time Stay prepared.